Hey there, and welcome to the bonus Lex chat. I'm so sorry I haven't done one of these in quite a few weeks. It's been like, what, at least three weeks maybe since I've done a Lex chat, a bonus episode for Lex chat. Uh, definitely is not a day that I typically do the bonuses. And in fact, the reason why I haven't been doing bonus episodes is because I've been having guests here back to back and it seems like three hours of recording is too much for people. It's not too much for me because, you know, this is for me. Obviously, I'm going to be a little bit more passionate about it than others. But, you know, I don't want to overwhelm my guests with doing that amount of content in one night. Um, so I, that's one reason why there has been such a delay in the bonus episodes for the Lex chat. But... I think, I think in the future, I will do the live recordings of Lex Chat and After Hours on Wednesdays, and then either on Thursday or Friday, we'll come back and do a bonus Lex Chat. So, if you catch that live, then you hear the bonus Lex Chat. But if you don't catch it live, the only way to get the bonus episodes of Lex Chat is to become a patron at patreoncom LexiATL. And I'm giving this little spiel because I'm currently on Instagram Live. So for anyone who didn't know, who's tuning in on Instagram Live, you gotta, in order to get the re the replay of this bonus Lex Chat episode, you have to be a patron of mine. Subscribe for as little as $5 a month or more per month if you choose to pledge that at patreon.com slash LexiATL. Patreon.com slash L-E-X-C-A-T-L. And that's how, if you miss the live, you will still get access to the bonus episodes. Um, I have yet to release a bonus episode for the public. I definitely want to, but it has to be an impactful episode. So, but anyway, all of that to say, welcome to the bonus Lex chat. And I just wanted to throw that reminder out there. Remember that Lex chat does do, we do have a live recording of Lex chat on Wednesdays, typically, typically like eight eight or nine o'clock we'll say eight o'clock about eight o'clock and the replay of the episode comes on Mondays at 8 a.m on Patreon YouTube Spotify Apple Podcasts yes those are all the places I had to make sure so um actually let's see here on Instagram live we got school money we got mixed by black we got if Instagram would let me see the people. Wow. Okay. We have official Mr. Flat Shoals. We have Mixed by Black. We got School Money. We got Chaos. We got Amy. Thank y'all so much for tuning in live. School Money wants to talk about relationships and how to manage work and relationships. So thank y'all so much for tuning in live. Special shout out to Black, who is actually a patron. So he better than all y'all must suckers. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and thank you for coming out again to the show last night. And thank you for sending these files over. Let me see. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna have to open it on something else because it's, it's a lot. So yeah, let's talk about relationships and y'all tuning in live ask me any questions and we're we're gonna have this chat about how to manage work and relationships i'm gonna assume you mean romantic relationships for me anything that you truly want you are going to make time for most people want to make money most people also want love now, which one you decide to pursue first is going to be up to you. But um, <laughs> so let's get into it. How do I manage work and relationships? And it doesn't even have to be romantic relationships. It could be relationships with friends. It could be family relationships. And of course, it could also be romantic relationships as well. But something that I think I've gotten really good at, or at least I pride myself on, is having a calendar that I refer to every single day, multiple times a day 
for someone who is in my kind of industry, which is music and mixed by black can attest to this and official Mr. Flash shows can attest to this too. When you work in the studio business, we are pretty much at the whim of clients and a client's schedule. So we're bending to what is most convenient for that client. And it's not necessarily convenient to what we might have going on in our personal lives, but in order for us to get the money, to make the sale, to get the session, we often have to put aside what we would prefer our schedule to be. If we so choose to cater to the schedules of clients, right? So you're either scheduling based on the client's preferences, or you are having a clear boundary of what you want for yourself as far as what kind of schedule is ideal for you. So for me, starting out when I became an engineer full time, because I did work a regular job before jumping into full time engineering, but starting out, I was taking sessions whenever I could get them, whenever they would pop up. So if I had been working my regular job all day until like eight or nine o'clock at night, and then someone called last minute and said they want a 10 o'clock session, I was there. And that's something that I chose to do. That's something I chose to give time to. That's because I wasn't getting as many sessions and I wanted to try to secure a clientele by being readily available for those people, right? But if you, even if you're not working a primary job or a secondary job and you're fitting re recording into that schedule, right? I talked about this in the get ready with me video. We we're talking about how to avoid burnout. Something that causes burnout is not setting those boundaries and not having a clear understanding of what you want for yourself. So it really depends. Do you want to be the kind of person that is bending to the whims and schedules of other people? Or do you want to define for yourself what an ideal schedule looks like for you and set that boundary to make sure that nobody gets in the way of infringing on the days off that you said you wanted for yourself? Okay. So that's going to be really important, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as how you fit in your relationships with that work relationship, work life balance, right? So these days I've finally gotten to a point where I am kind of like secure mentally with knowing that Wednesday nights, I do not want to take sessions. Why? Because I have made up in my mind that Wednesday night will be dedicated to making content for Lexi, for Lex chat, for sexy Lexi after hours. And if I choose to have a guest, it's also kind of a dedicated day of cooking. I struggle with not cooking for myself. So relationship with myself has not always been good because I wasn't defining certain boundaries, but I finally made the decision. And if I get no other day off, I at least get Wednesday off, right? or at least Wednesday night, because it doesn't feel like work. But all that to say, I made the con conscious decision in my mind that I will not take sessions on Wednesday because that is reserved for recording of Lex chat and after hours and for cooking for myself or cooking for whatever guest is coming to be on the show. And it's going to be the same with relationships. You have to, I, I mentioned about getting on the, getting on the calendar consistently, right? I'm constantly checking my calendar every day and multiple times throughout the day because it helps me to stay organized with my time because we are in a client based industry. It's very important that we are mapping out our day, our week, our month. If we're able to, I typically like to be able to map out my week just to know what I need to expect for the days to come. Now, as far as relationships with your family, with friends, with a love interest, it really just comes down to respecting those boundaries. So you have like for me, right? There's supposed to be this session scheduled tomorrow at nine o'clock, but on, but yesterday people were like, Hey, we want you to come back to this venue and perform for us on Friday. So now I'm going to have to tell this client like, Hey, 
I haven't talked to him yet, but I need to ask him, can we move our session either for earlier in the day or for a different day or for next week altogether? Now, if it is important to me for the relationship I have with these people to show up to this event on Friday, then I will move this session to a different day, a different time, right? If, if it's more important to me that this person actually made plans to do this session on this day, way before I was invited by these other people, then I would hold fast to the promise that I made to this client. We are going to record on this day. And I would tell these other people that, Hey, actually I can't do that on Friday. I already made previous arrangements. So I think when it comes to that work life balance, it's just going to be about what kind of values do you uphold? And I think you can do both, right? Like you can say no to the new people who want your time on a pre, a pre-scheduled day, or you can schedule this person. I would just say, be careful with how often you are switching up on certain people. So like I typically do not move this session when they book with me. So me asking them this one time, and this is like the first time they'll be more understanding. Right. But if I'm always constantly like making plans to record with this person, but I'm always changing the plans or canceling the plans or rescheduling, which is changing. So that was redundant. If I'm always doing that to this person, then that affects the trust they have in me. And that affects how they perceive my respect of their time. You know, they're going to perceive me as though I don't respect their time because whenever they want to do things with me, I'm canceling, I'm rescheduling, something's always happening. So that would destroy the trust they have that I value their time and I will stay true to the original word that I gave them. Right. So when you're thinking about relationships in that way, you just have to keep your word and keep your boundaries is the best advice and the best way that I can word this right now. If anyone has any commentary on what I've said so far in the Instagram live, please feel free to make those comments be known right now. But I, th I think that's the main thing. So for me, um, Oh, Amy pick says, then they'll go somewhere else. Dot, dot, dot. Exactly. So when it comes to the relationships, right, there just has to be an understanding. There has to be communication and understanding and then action behind what you want to happen and actually taking steps to make certain things happen. And that's how you build trust between yourself and the people in your life. So it, it, it becomes very difficult, I understand, because like I said, being in the studio, in the business of having clients, it's very scary, the idea of rejecting clients. And it's scary, the idea of telling someone, no, I won't work on this day. <laughs> um, because, you know, if this is not like a secure client, someone that you've been working with for a long time, then there's a high likelihood that they'll just say, all right, cool. You can't do it today. Well, then I won't work with you today. I'll go find someone else. And I feel like the current, one of the current owners that I work under, I feel like he operates under this fear. If we don't catch them first then someone else will, because oftentimes when you are the first studio experience that someone has, they will more likely be your repeat customer unless they're just a disloyal artist who doesn't care about a consistent sound or doesn't care about building a relationship with engineer or with the studio. Right. But typically whoever gets the client is the one who retains that client and they become, you know, a long time client, assuming that the experience is good. Right. So I understand his thinking on that, but a lot of times I feel like it comes at the price of not respecting the boundaries of the engineers, but that's another, that's another topic for another day. Uh, mixed by black says pretty much hit everything on point. Learn yourself, set those boundaries. Amy pick 70 says more time needs to be spent with 
and on newer relationships, no matter the type. Um, more times need to be spent with and on newer relationships. I will partially agree and partially disagree with you. Newer relationships are going to require a different level of courting, a different level of spending time and getting to know because it's new and you're getting to know each other's workflow, each other's personalities, each other's habits, things of that nature. But if you are too concerned, if you're overly concerned with always getting the new relationship, what happens to the existing relationships that are falling to the wayside or are not being watered or being shown the same enthusiasm as the new relationships? That's that's what would be my rebuttal. So yes, it's nice to make connections, but it's also, in my opinion, better to, once you find those genuine connections and those people that you rock with, you gotta put in the effort to maintain those relationships. And the way that you maintain the relationship with anybody really, um, it's gonna be about who gets the most time with you. I find it very, I guess, exhausting having to keep getting to know new people all the time. And this is not just for clients, but also especially romantically. I hate the talking stage <laughs> when it comes to relationships. So like two months ago, I got back on OkCupid and Tinder and quickly remembered why I don't like going on those apps because the amount of messages, like I'm getting multiple likes, right? And I'm liking multiple people. But then having to sift through the same kind of conversations with these people, it's not exciting for me. Like, hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, what were you up to today? Oh, you know, working and now I'm sleeping. What about you? Oh yeah, I hit the gym and I went to work. What's your favorite color? Red, what's yours? Oh, I like blue, like the sky. And it's just the same, I hate that little dance in the very beginning romantically of trying to get to know somebody let's get to the real shit you know so that's why i partially disagree with what you say i would say don't be afraid to meet new people but place more emphasis on maintaining the relationships with people who you feel you most click with and the way that you will maintain it is by giving the time and basically keeping boundaries respecting time and um, having the action of consistently giving someone that time. Let's see, absolutely. City of Brooklyn says the maintenance on a tree will differ from the maintenance of a plant. The maintenance on a tree will differ from the maintenance of a plant. That's true. A tree has formed its roots. It's strong, it's spread out. It's not gonna lean, it's upright because it's grounded. Have you ever tried to grow an apple tree? I have, and let me tell you how annoying it is. So you get the seeds, you wet a paper towel, you put the seeds on the paper towel, you fold it up into the paper towel, you put it in a plastic baggie, you put it in the fridge for four to six weeks until the seed sprouts. One time, I left, I guess one or two of the seeds. I had, let's say I had five seeds. One or two of the seeds, the, whatever was sprouting out of the seed, they turned brown and died. I could not get those seeds to go. So then I only had three seeds that were plantable. So I planted those seeds and one of them was in the soil, did not grow. I had two of them that was growing, great. Doing great. One of them got watered too much and essentially drowned in water and died. The other one was growing very nicely, but at nighttime, some asshole of an animal came and chomped. They bit a huge piece of my apple tree leaf. It actually recovered from that and it kept like growing. I made sure to water it once a day, but not dampening the soil. And like the other one that drowned, it rained and I forgot to bring the plant inside. So it, that was its demise. But this one, some critter took a huge chomp out of the leaf, but it was fine, it kept growing. 
And then there was another time there are people who come to do the, the lawn. They did the leaf blower and knocked over my little apple tree, my baby apple plant. And it's hot, okay, it's summertime. They knocked it over and the leaves hit the hard, hot cement and burned the leaves and it died. So, you know, there's just so many factors that could affect that. Thank you for my story time. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my story time on that. But that newer seed, like it, 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 it requires so much more attention than an established planted tree. Thank you for that analogy, city of Brooklyn. <laughs> Thank you for that. Mixed by Black says, I nurture the relationships based on the mindset. If you are as passionate as I am about the art, I'll put in a bit more effort. But if you, if you are what I call a recreational artist, I just treat you like a regular degular schmegula. I added that degular schmegula, but yeah. Um, city of Brooklyn, germination. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, exactly. My involvement with people will depend on just like Mixed by Black said, if I like your, your mindset and I like how you think and I like how you work and we match in work ethic and we match in values, then that's the kind of relationship I would want to nurture. But if I don't like your mindset, I'm not going to give that more time. I'm not going to give that as much time. City of Brooklyn is laughing at my apple story. Animal said, how you like them apples? Shh, I don't know, cause you killed my apple tree, animal. I don't know if it was some, it could have been a wascally wabbit. You are absolutely right, EK. You are absolutely right. Amy Pick 70 says, I saw a meme today where he texts good morning. Oh God, I hate good morning texts. For this reason, let me, let me finish reading, but I think I know what you're gonna say. She replies, good morning. He texts, what are you doing? She says, hanging with my boo. He says, your boo He's like, yeah. And I think it was like one man, all he ever did was good morning me to death. The other one said good morning and made plans and put action. Yes. For that reason, I do not like good morning texts because usually it's only because guys think that girls want to hear a good morning text. But if you good morning me and you have no intention of starting a conversation or making some plans with me, save your good morning for Instagram comments. Don't text my phone. Good morning. I hate that. Anywho, she says, yeah, my boo. You've been saying good morning for five months. He took the time to meet me. Yes, I love that meme. I love that meme. EK says that part. Relationships. Let's touch that word. Yeah. So I have dealt with guys who would good morning me to death because they think it's cute and they think that's what girls want to hear. Yes, a woman wants good morning, but I want good morning with intention and you intend on putting some action behind it. And then some guys can't even be bothered to completely spell out what you're doing. They'll send W-Y-D. Ugh. City of Brooklyn says, say good morning when you roll over in person. Right, <laughs> because that's a much better good morning than some little funky text message that you probably copy and pasted and sent to 10 other women within five minutes of you waking up yourself and you got some women thinking that they're special no you just copied and pasted my boy and you ain't taking nobody on no dates but well, anyway that was a little trigger for me but yes exactly so certain relationships you the main thing is basically you got to put action behind nurturing a relationship and with newer relationships it's going to with certain relationships, it's going with, with newer relationships. It's going to take a certain period of time where you're having to get to know one another, just like with my apple seed story, you know, apples are very, it's easy, but it's also can be difficult to get the apple tree started, right? You got to germinate them. That's the word. Got to start them off on that cold environment on a damp paper towel so the seeds can sprout. 
and then you have to plant them in the soil but you can't plant it too close to the surface you can't plant it too far into the soil otherwise you know it won't ever implant into the soil if it's too high or it'll be so far down that it's just too much for the seed to sprout and break through so you got to be careful with how deeply you're putting it in there and then you can't pack the soil too tightly on top of the new seed and then the position that you plant the seed you have to make sure that the part that's sprouting out of the seed is up towards the surface of the soil not down because then you're just adding more work to where it has to turn and go up like you know and then you have to have it in sunlight for a certain amount of time but while it's in sunlight you got to make sure that it's watered properly the soil it can't be too dry it can't be too damp if it's too dry it's not getting enough nutrients if it's too damp then you're going to drown the seed and you're going to kill it or it'll make the soil unstable and it it's just so many factors or in my case if an animal comes by and bites a big ass bite into my leaf it actually survived that you know the other side grew and it was doing well but it was those damn yard people who knocked over my poor little apple cup and did not put it back and the hot cement burned my apple leaf and that did that one in and there there goes that but next time I will take better care to maybe place it in a more sturdy foundation so it's not easily knocked over <sighs> but I was very upset about that y'all just so you know but I do have four or five seeds in the fridge right now that have started sprouting so I'm gonna try again city of Brooklyn says yeah that good morning is for when you have a tree yes you can't good morning the seeds yeah oh wait I think I missed something I did miss them Mixed by Black says, I text good morning to let you know you're on my mind, especially because of the industry I'm in, I may not always be with you. Eh, I would say figure out which girls like that. For me, because I'm constantly hit up by multiple people about sessions, good morning texts without the intent of starting a conversation or without the intent of making plans, it's just clutter in my inbox. And I've, I've dated people who are also in the industry who we make time to see each other personally, whether that's, even if it's just once a week, if we can agree on once a week and we both put the action behind maintaining that agreement and that promise, then that's way better than getting good morning and what you doing to death. EK says, my pillow be giving me attitude when I tell it good morning. Oh. Just flip it to the cool side. <laughs> Amy says, ugh, I hate WID. Me too. Take more establishing. Three inches. I'll say two inches, but that's because the depth of the cups that I had, they weren't that. Three inches was like the max. But City of Brooklyn says, yes, that good morning is for when you have a tree. You can't good morning the seeds. EK says, funny thing is, before we see the tree, the amount of care taken before you even see the tree. Yeah, very, very good point. For the seed to blossom and even beyond that, the dirt to daylight. And what if the yard people ate the leaf and knocked it over? And you know what? Those men be waving at me and smiling in my face. And they saw I had a little apple seed on my, on my porch. And that was important to me. So they would not be someone that I would pursue a relationship with because they don't respect me and they don't respect what I'm building. I want an apple tree because I'm tired of buying apples at the grocery store. I want to control some of my food a little bit. But yeah, what if they took a bite out of my apple leaf and then knocked it over, assholes? <laughs> I would be very upset. And that, <laughs> figure out which girls. But that busy box part makes sense. Yeah, so... It just takes, it just takes a while, you know? You have to decide if, okay, the person that I just met, you do have to take time to get to know certain things about them. But just like that apple, just like that apple seed scenario, there are so many variables that could either place the seed in the most ideal growing environment or place the seed in jeopardy and make it so that it's not even possible to plant and grow. Um, to be 
set and a good foundation for it to grow. There are so many variables that play a role. Um, so you just, you gotta kind of tread lightly and slowly get to know and be more attentive and learn what is, what is someone like? What is their mindset? Do they think the way that I think? Do they, do they argue the same way I argue? <clears throat> Excuse me. Do they, are they as calm as me? Do they succumb to pressure and stress? How do they act when they're under stress? Are they assholes or are they still kind? Um, it's just a lot. Tampa Boy Beat says, hi there. Does anyone, <laughs> hey yo, does anyone need animated illustrations? You are a troll, Tampa. You really are. You are a troll. <clears throat> You are you a troll. He's a troll for that. Don't pay him no mind. But for real though, if you need illustrations, hit up my boy. $40. City of Brooklyn, if you don't want to be down with me, the, you don't want to pick from my apple tree. Erica Badu. Appropriate quote for them. Oh, then. Thank you for that. Because <laughs> I was like, the? I was trying to make it all poetic and whatnot. If you don't want to be down with me, then you don't want to pick from my apple tree. Erica Badu. Snaps. Huh. EK says, argue. What's that? Like, yeah. I think a an important consideration for someone that you would mesh well with. Do you argue the same way? I had this conversation with someone the other day. I don't want to be with someone that I can't properly argue with. So when we have disagreements, which that's inevitably inevitably going to happen, ever since I straightened my teeth, I have a lisp. I, I don't speak as clearly as I used to. Uh, but yeah, if the person that you are with, they like to yell and call you out your name when they get angry because they disagree with you on something. But if you're the kind of person when you get angry you sit, you listen, you're calm. That might not be the best pairing. Like find someone who argues the same way as you. That's important. I, just because I'm angry, I'm not gonna call you out your name. I'm not gonna hit you. I'm not gonna throw things. I'm not gonna destroy my property or your property. That's not what I do. When I'm angry, I'm calm. I'm still trying to listen to you. I'm irritated but I'm still gonna hear you out because I'm supposed to love and respect you. If you, in my mind, if you love and respect me, you would never call me out of turn, no matter how you're feeling because feelings are temporary. So you gotta have control and you gotta be disciplined when you're disagreeing with me. Because if you are so easily swayed by something like emotion and your emotions are constantly changing throughout the day, then we're not gonna work. EK says debate. I was on the debate team in middle school. Fun facts. And your voice is still beautiful. Thank you. Tampa boy beat says, yes, yes. Unplugged. Just send over the verification code. What? $40 dollar illustrations. My air balls. <laughs> y'all are both some trolls. Thank y'all so much for making this connection. Um, EK says, but then people call out a names. That's personal. Yeah. All those are unhealthy personal traits beyond partner traits. Yeah. Uh, emotions, energy in motion, mind it over matter. I agree. Uh, City of Brooklyn says, damn, imagine two quiet people arguing. <laughs> Dead silent. Okay, so no. <sighs> like me, I'm not about to yell at you. I've actually had somebody get mad at me in a previous relationship because... I didn't show enough emotion for him. He was used to arguing with a woman and she cursing and yelling and he cursing and yelling back. But the way that my temperament is set up, I don't want to hurt you. If I love you and I respect you and I say I love you and I say I respect you, why would I make you feel unsafe in my tone? Why would I make you feel unsafe physically in my presence? I'm not going to hit you. I'm not. Only time I put my hands on you is when I'm trying to get some things popping. Okay. Only time I put my hands on you is when I want to get some shit popping. I'm not going to hit you 
unless you slap in my ass you can hit me but we're not on after hours this is the bonus episode of lex chat so we're not gonna get too sexual with that but yeah he legit got upset with me for not yelling at him but that's how he was used to arguing so he interpreted my calmness as oh she don't care she's nonchalant when i had to explain to him like what do you mean i'm sitting here listening to you and then when i tried to argue with him he didn't know how to shut up and listen to what i was saying so i never felt heard i never felt like he valued my I never felt like he valued my feelings and I never felt safe sharing things with him because I would sit there and listen to him no matter how much he was yelling and screaming at me and sometimes he did call me out of my name and I stayed like an idiot but um when it came time for me to express myself I could never get a word in what kind of argument is that we're not getting shit done let me I'm just I should It is a bonus episode. We don't need to keep it clean. But when it came to me wanting to voice my concerns, he, uh, yeah, I couldn't get a word in. So very, I felt very unsafe. And then that whole situation, it was temporary protective orders in place and it, it, it got real crazy. That was a toxic relationship. You say I'm toxic, but you are too. Daddy calling me boo, get lit with your crew know about you shout out to Tampa boy beats uh city of Brooklyn said that's a lyric only time I put my hands on you I was thinking of the Kiki Wyatt song put your hands on me when you want to feel something soft put your hands on me when some love is about to get jumped off but don't put your hands on me when you're pissed off and your job laid off you can yell scream blowing off steam don't put your hands on me that's my shit i wonder if anybody remembers that song ek says that's the part we're so lost at as black folks mainly like shit respect is easy disrespect takes effort Disrespect takes a lot of energy. It really does. Disrespect takes a lot of energy. Mano Picasso says, shake them zeros and get you a hero, baby. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, Tampa Boy B says, I don't like women that inflate the velocity of their voice to be heard. Bad delivery. Bad judgmental. No. Bad judgmental bad relationships yeah is that what you meant like (laughs) they like raise the intensity like the the pitch of their voice and then they start talking real fast and then they got their fingers in your face that's disrespectful to me i don't and i don't like them kind of women either nobody wants to be around those kind of people very bad delivery and you're not gonna get heard that way EK says friends best. Even if your lover is your lover, take that time before the relationship is labeled as. So this uh, <laughs> increased the velocity of their voice. Um, Tampa boy beats. I'm such a, said I'm such a producer. EK says that voice. Lord, yes, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Kiki Wyatt. She is a goat. That doesn't get enough flowers in my opinion. Uh, Tampa Boy B says, I ignore folk like them. This is probably going to end up becoming a public bonus episode. Um, the original topic that school money laid before us was balancing work and relationships. So, but this is mainly turned into a relationship kind of conversation. Basically, you got to know your boundaries. I really don't want this to go past an hour. So let me set my little range here. But you really have to it's easy to balance work and relationships when you have a clear understanding of the kind of schedule you want to have and then when you have a clear understanding of how you want to show up for the people in your life so for me i want people to know that i value their time so when we make plans to do something i put it in my calendar and i make sure not to schedule anything for that day or time because this day and time I reserved that for so-and-so you know 
um, and you build trust and you build on a relationship by always honoring those times when you said on this day, let's do this together. Or, you know, you make those plans and then you stick to those plans. That's how you build trust. And that's how you build on the relationship. You keep having plans made and you keep following through with plans. Eventually you can give each other grace. You know, you might have to cancel one, two, three times. Don't do it consecutively like back to back because then that person might think you're not serious about spending time with me or doing this with me or your word doesn't mean anything because you make plans, but then you don't follow through. So that as far as the work and relationship balance, just make sure that you are working the right amount of days that you said you want to work. But also make sure you're giving yourself the days off that you said you want to give yourself. And what will you do with those days off? For me, like I said, Wednesdays, I'll typically give myself off to record the Lex chat and the Sexy Lexi After Hours podcast shows that I have. And I'll be cooking either for myself or for my guests. And Wednesday is a day that I do that. That's what I've decided. I will not let things get scheduled at least like after five o'clock, that's for me, you know? So Tampa Boy Beat says balancing work and relationships. Hmm. Based on being honest about your schedule and what you can deal with and what you can't deal with, the expectation of dropping things to hang out is a waste. I agree with that. I agree with that. There just needs to be that communication of what day and time did we say we were going to do something? Let's stick to that. And man, just when we're getting into the conversation, Instagram does not want me to go past an hour. So um, they gave me this little two minute warning here. So, and that's good because I didn't want this bonus Lex chat to be too long. So this will probably be right at about 45, but yeah. I think um I think I'll make this bonus episode available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So the main the main Lex chat drops Mondays at 8 a.m. This bonus I will probably do on a Tuesday at 8 a.m. Just be on the lookout for that if you want to get a recap of this entire conversation. Tampa Boy Beast is dropping work or prior engagements. It's all about communication, but if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this conversation because I will make this public. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please make sure you give me a five out of five star rating so that this will be pushed in front of more audiences and so I can grow my audience. More people can get more ears on this show. Um, Lex Chat, live recording every Wednesday after eight o'clock as well as the after hours. Um, and then the replay is on Monday at 8 a.m. Sexy Lexi after hours that airs on Fridays at 9 p.m. on OnlyFans, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music. Yeah, all those good things. But again, if you want to get more access to more bonus episodes, then you have to become a patron of mine at patreon.com slash LexiATL, patreon.com slash L-E-X-C, ATL for as little as five dollars a month you can become a patron of mine or you can choose to pledge more money if you would like and I just had to I just got kicked off of Instagram it's okay let me turn off my do not disturb because I think I want a phone call from a certain somebody um but yeah so you can become a patron and have access to all the bonus episodes. This particular one I'm choosing to make public because I do think it's an important conversation to have. Um, and it goes along with the get ready with me video that I did the other day where I said, you know, part of burning out is because we don't respect our own boundaries. So when it comes to work and relationship balance, it comes down to boundaries. Once again, figure out what you want and Figure out the days that you are willing to work that will be profitable for you and help you to maintain your life, but then figure out the days that you want to rest. And on those rest days, will that be for you? Will that be for people that you want to spend time with? 
you know, just you got to figure out what's important to you and do not do not eliminate your boundaries trying to please other people or things. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, hopefully this conversation was helpful for you. Again, if you are on YouTube, like comment down below your thoughts on this conversation hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each and every time I post a new piece of content. If you are on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please make sure you give me a five out of five star rating and leave me a review that will really help this podcast to get more notice and to be put in front of more audience members, which I would greatly appreciate. Lex Chat and Sexy Lexi After Hours films live on Instagram. That's Lexi ATL on Instagram. Wednesday nights after eight o'clock. Lex Chat airs Mondays at 8 a.m. Sexy Lexi After Hours airs Fridays at 9 p.m. So make sure you remember that schedule and join us for the live chat because it's really it really gets interesting, especially with the after hours chat that we do. But thank you so much for tuning in to this bonus episode of Lex Chat. I do hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, my name is Lexi. Peace. <laughs>